Dylan Radigan is a financial journalist and the host of MSNBC's Morning Meeting. Michael Moore is a documentary filmmaker whose latest film, Capitalism, A Love Story, is in theaters now. Guys, good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Dylan, let me, let me start with you. There are going to be a lot of confused people out here. The yeah. Dow is over 10,000 again. The bonuses are back, but on Main Street, you've got money still tight. Spending is, is tough. People can't get mortgages. Unemployment's still a problem. Is it just the reality now that Wall Street and Main Street are completely disconnected? Uh, largely they are. Unfortunately, the government has changed the rules on behalf of Wall Street to allow them access to trillions of our dollars, as you and I have discussed, and as Michael Moore has documented. Uh, when you have access to trillions of dollars of taxpayer money with no strings attached, it's very easy to make a few billion dollars. A billion is only one one-thousandth of a trillion, and because our government is allowing the indulgence of the risk-taking of the trillions of our own money, uh, and not only is it allowing Wall Street to make make the billions, but it also is depriving the rest of our economy uh, the use of those funds, which is why you see the heart-wrenching anecdotes that Michael Moore uh, is so good at portraying. There's a direct connection between those who you see suffering in films that Michael documents and the, the abdication of duty by our government to allow all the taxpayer money we all work so hard to create to be the plaything, the gambling toy uh, of the financial industry as opposed to forcing the financial industry to, to get back to the business of being investors and becoming you know, the next Warren Buffett, actually putting money into Michael, the economy as opposed to taking it out. Michael, let me make sure people understand. This Wall Street Journal report says that the uh, Wall Street firms are going to pay out about $140 billion in bonuses this year. The year before the economic meltdown, 2007, they paid out about $130 billion. So it's gone up. How's this news going to go over with people like the ones in your home state, in Michigan, that just found out unemployment's at 15.3% in that state? Well, eventually people aren't going to take it. And I don't know how many gated communities these people who are taking this $140 billion in bonuses, I don't know how many castles with moats around them they can build, but I'll tell you something, there's an anger that's building out there and I mean, I mean, Matt, these people, they burned down our economy. They completely crashed it. And now they're getting rewarded for it. It'd be like if I burned down your house today and then tomorrow you send me a check for it, thanking me. I mean, it's, it's absolutely insane that we allow this to happen, but not surprising because that's our capitalist system. They can get away with it well, because well, it's legal. They can get away with it because they can make whatever they want to make. They can take whatever they want to take. Let me play There's devil's no such advocate. Thing as Let me play devil's advocate. And this is for both of you. Michael, why don't you start with it? What about this axiom that in business you pay your best people more to keep them so they keep making you money? And, and, and what about the argument that these bonuses are simply a way of rewarding the people who are making the most <laughs> money for these institutions? Okay, let's, let's see. Let's pay the best people. These would be these people who helped to wreck and ruin our economy. Let's pay them for what they did. I mean, this is absolutely crazy logic. There are 14,000 people every day that lose their health insurance. As you said in your report, there's 15 million people out of work. There's a, person, there's, a, there's a home that's foreclosed in this country once every seven and a half seconds. Now, sooner or later, people are going to say, that's it. That's enough. I, my, my hope is that when the, when the congressional switchboard opens in about an hour, that everybody watching this just calls their member of Congress and say that they've had it, that they want this stopped. This is, I mean, you said that Bank of America is going to hand out $30 billion in bonuses. You know how much TARP money, our money, our bailout money they got? $30 billion. That's our money. I mean, this, I mean, if Dylan, people just yeah, sit by I, and let I, this you know, happen, then we deserve everything we get. It, it, capitalism, as, as in its best form, the government strictly enforces rules of investment, Matt, on the, on the financial side, so that the only way an investor can make money is by trying to be the next great venture capitalist, the next great Warren Buffett, and picking winners among our best and brightest to support innovators. So you have innovators here, investors here, and then workers that support both of those communities. What Wall Street has done is they've taken the language of innovation and wrapped it around the business of investment and changed the government rules so what they're innovating is a way to take 
take money out as opposed to a way to put money in. So when you say pay your best people, you have to be clear as to what you're paying your best people to do. And if you are paying your best people to extract as much money as possible from the economy, yes, they are creating that value, if you want to call it that, right. but they're creating it at the expense of the totality of the system, which is why you see that. In an ideal world, you, me, and Mr. And Moore here are competing to invest money to be the next Warren Buffett with no. kids from colleges <coughs> Matt, across here, here, this country with ideas as opposed to I've, coming up with schemes where okay. we change the rules and basically Michael, just 30 seconds fraud. left. Take the last 30 seconds, please. We're, 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 we're a year after the crash and not one single regulation has been passed, not one. Uh, there's a bill right now be, uh, before the Financial Services Committee in the Senate uh, to have a consumer protection agency. The banking industry has fought this. You know they've poured over $200 million in lobbying fees just this year alone to stop any single rule from being put on them. They, they are out of control. They will not stop unless they're reined in. But as long as you've got an economic system that encourages this kind of greed, that legalizes the greed, then you're going to see not only this, you're going to see other things happening uh, in the future. And you know what? If Goldman Sachs right. is so poor, you know, maybe people should just, maybe everybody watching should just take a few pennies and drop them in an envelope and send them to them at 85 Broad Street, New York, gonna, New York today, if they're really hurting that bad. I'm going to make that the last word. Michael, thank you very much. Dylan, thank you as well. Thank Good you. talking to both of you.